Hey everybody, this is for my subscribers. Um, yeah, quick change to post. I'm sure you're all looking forward to the next episodes. I'm sorry it's been a delay. I have to earn money, I have to work. Um, I had time to do 13 videos in two weeks. Um, I haven't got time at the moment to do those. This was a paying job. I put these videos up off turning on the mandrel because I was just filming while I was earning money. Yeah, we all understand that. Um, I filmed it, you know, edited it out on a weekend, what have you. As you can see, I'm in my Wales shirt. I'm disappointed. England defeated Wales. Yes. Um, yay ho. You know, it was a great game. England played very well. You know, that's just the way it is. Yeah, we lost that one. Okay, so Quick Change Tool Post will be coming back very shortly. I've got a lot of work on at the moment. This week I was flat out working for a company doing their YouTube videos, um, or videos that will end up on YouTube. Um, I do a lot of acting work and what have you. Um, but engineering is my first love. I'm a tool maker by trade. I don't know whether you all know that. I haven't worked as a tool maker for best part of yeah, 15 years. Uh, hence why I decided I'm going to buy a lathe. Uh, and get on with it because I just miss it. Miss working with metal, getting swarf in my hands. Um, you know, if I pick up a piece of wood, I get a splinter. Pick up a piece of steel, sharp or what have you, it doesn't touch me. Uh, it's been a lifetime of engineering. Um, if you enjoy engineering, you'll enjoy my videos. Um, I try to be unorthodox. Uh, and I will use my lathe to do things that could be done on a mirror all the time. I haven't got a milling machine. Um, I will use the lathe to do things that could be done far quicker and simpler on a drill press. But what I'm trying to show is what can be done on a lathe. Uh, bear with me, I'm doing my best. I'm new to this, as I said, uh, this will be maybe my third week doing YouTube videos in my own right as aid workshop. So, like and subscribe guys. So as I'm going to call this uh, particular video turning on an expanding mandrel, I think we need to look at the expanding mandrel. So basically what I've got here is a turned piece of aluminium. The large section here will fit in, in this case, my three jaw chuck. Um, people talk about three jaw chucks being accurate to within like four thou, that sort of thing. I think I must be one of the lucky ones, um, although I bought, I did purchase the lathe new. My three jaw chuck actually runs within a couple of hundredths of a millimeter. I can put the clock on it when it's running and you know, it's negligible, it's a couple of hundred. So perhaps I'm lucky, perhaps because it's new and it'll start to go out of tolerance pretty quickly. But um, I'm, you know, as long as you've got the full jaw coverage, which this uh, uh, length of this diameter will cover it and the diameter seems to work out well um, it's about I don't know 27 mil something like that 28 mil something like that diameter uh, maybe 30 uh, it seems to be very accurate holding at that point um, so anyway to talk about the expanding mandrel basically it's hollowed out um, very difficult for me to show um, see if I can get a picture in there get a bit of light um, it's drilled and tapped m8 in the bottom um, then there's a little bit of a clearance hole and then a 60 degree taper and then a counter bore in the front to thin the metal down a little. Um, secondary to that, I've basically just hacksawed um, three cuts with a hacksaw. One, two, three. All done by eye, um, but you know, as you can see, fairly uniformly. Um, some hacksaw grooves right down to with, um, so that it actually enters the threaded area. So what I've also got is an M8 Allen bolt and I've machined the underside of the head um, concentric with the threads uh, to 60 degree taper um, and it just takes a 6mm Allen key. When this Allen bolt is screwed down in to the expanding mandrel, um, the taper on the Allen bolt meets up with the taper down in the bore and actually spreads out the wings um, as you can see, the six wings there and spreads them out to grip the component. Now, of course, the important thing is you don't want it spreading out miles and miles. It'd be no good the OD of this being 22 mil and the bore of whatever you're trying to hold being 23 because you wouldn't keep it concentric. Um, the bore of the components going on this, uh, I've, oh, off the top of my head, I think it's 23 mil. And 
this is just a running fit in that bore so that the slightest slightest expansion of this mandrel uh, grips the component that I'm going to be machining really solidly. I don't get any slip or anything like that and it grips it really solidly. So I'll, I'll show you me fitting it up and putting one of the components on the mandrel. So here we are, you can see the mandrel there. Now the face I machined and bored is this face here, so I know that the bore is exactly parallel to this most recently machined face, and I did break the edge after machining. So if I put that machined face against the backstop on my mandrel firmly, and push it right up to, as I said, it's a good fit on this mandrel. I've got clearance in the front because I will be chamfering the bore. And then nip it up. Now when that bolt went in, it's expanded the jaws of the mandrel. And that is now locked on there dead solid. The inside stays concentric because there's very little clearance. And I can now machine the outside in one hit. Then reverse it round, do the other side and the outside diameter, that sort of thing. And I'm always concentric with that bore, and it's like having it done in one hit. So the first job, having put it on the mandrel, yep, you guessed it, face it off. Now I've, when I was pre-machining this, it's around 0 0.6, 0 0.8 of a millimetre oversized from the finished size. Taking it that that back face is finished size. I'm going to give this face a little skim and I know that it's concentric and um, what I will do is once I've skimmed it I will set that position as my datum for zero in uh, this axis okay so let's get on with it quick skim across face as you can see there's a tiny bit needs cleaning up I mean a couple of out that's all it is so I'll machine that off at this stage. Bring it back out slowly. There we are. Now I'll set my DRO. That's my zero. So everything from that face I can measure directly on my DRO. So for instance, on this particular component from the front face, there is a shoulder 10 millimeters back. So I can machine down until I get somewhere near my diameter to maybe 9.8, something like that. And then I know I can face in that shoulder at 10 on my DRO and I'm going to be fairly accurate on my 10 mil step. So I'll make a start on that. Okay, so I'm using my carriage stop. I've set that so that um, I'm about 9.8, something like that off the face when I hit the back. Let's have a quick look at the DRO. A 9.7, here we are. I've skimmed the back face afterwards. Um, I'm taking a mil of time off the diameter. I started with 50 mil and I'm going to end up with 29 diameter. So I'm just hand feeding across till I hit the stop, just roughing out here. As I say, mil of the time, there's another seven. What I'll do is bring you back when we're somewhere near the finished diameter when we set up our 29 diameter on the DRO. Okay, we'll bring you back a bit later. So I'm creeping up on the final size of 20, uh, 29 mil. Uh, it's measuring 29.2 after that last cut. Um, I've set my DRO to zero. And theoretically, if I put 0.1 on the DRO, that should take the 0.2. So we'll finish it off with a finishing cut. Okay, I've sped things up a little. Uh, one hand on the hand wheel, one hand on the camera. a point one finishing cut and I'll do exactly the same for all the following cuts come to within point one and then take that last cut in the same manner so what I'll do is set my DRO to zero and we'll have a measure just to make sure that we are as near as damn it on 29 mil so adjusting gently on my carriage stop I've wound it across until I got to oh, bear with me I'll just pull back a touch it was yeah oh there we are it's, it's yeah i got a bit of dirt in there or something but it is there we go it is 10 millimeters so i now know that i have a setting from the outside edge to that shoulder of 10 mil and my diameter is 29 millimeters um i do need to turn the od of this um if zero on my dro is 29 millimeters 
If I was to come to say minus one, that would give me 31 and so on and so forth. So I can, without adjusting my DRO, as long as I know the differential between the minor diameter and the major diameter, I can come in to a known figure on my, uh, on my DRO without readjusting. Now the known figure I'm looking for is, let me just have a look, yes, just had a quick look at my sketch, is 50 mil. Now this is two inch bar. Um, so theoretically from that 29, if I can minus 10 on my DRO, that would be 49. So I need to be minus 10.5 on my reading of my DRO should give me 50 mil on this diameter. So I'm going to have a crack at one of those and I'll give it a measure and we'll see how close we end up. So there was a slight discrepancy. Uh, it measured up at 50.1 millimetres diameter. So what I've done is sort of calibrated it. Um, oh, I've actually just bumped the hand wheel. Um, but at 10.45 gives me an OD of um, 50 mil nearest damn it on the nose so to speak within sort of a couple of hundreds um so well within tolerance i got a 0 0.1 tolerance anyway but plus or minus so no worry on that so what i'm going to do now is break the front edge um i'm not going to change tools i'm going to leave the settings exactly as they are so break the front edge break the edge on the bore because i've faced it and break the top corner there it will be machined with chamfers afterwards but i'm going to break the edges of this take the job off and do the other uh, well, this is a batch of five, so do the other four to up to the same stage before putting them all back on the other way around. 